So let's look at the top five Odoo customization mistakes. First and foremost, when you have a customer in front of you, you need to check whether they need any customization at the first place. The reason I say that is, if you can keep their Odoo ERP as much as closer to the original code, uh, upgradations are hassle-free and it's always easy to maintain that code base. So first and foremost, if there is a workaround, like uh, as a customer, they will actually ask you like, hey, my QuickBooks was doing this, or my Sage was doing this, or Salesforce was doing that. They will ask like, hey, can I make my Odoo to work that way? Uh, if there is a feature in Odoo or there is a workaround, you need to educate your customers and make sure that you know that you deliver something closer to the Odoo source code, uh, the core code as much as possible. The second option is, of course, they are asking something that needs to be completely built. So there is definitely a need for customization. In that case, your first job is to see whether anybody has built a module like that for the community version. If there is something that exists that can be a framework for what the customer is asking for, then you can take that module and you can actually further improve it, right? The third option is if you can actually find a module that you can buy from the Odoo store. So there's a lot of uh, other partners who build like modules, which are like solving different world problems related to Odoo. If you can go buy it for a $500 or $400, that is more effective than you building this module from scratch. Now, let's say like you looked at the community, you looked at uh, uh, the enterprise uh, uh, applications or modules available on the store. You still cannot find anything. This is a place where you need to look at the release notes for the next Odoo version. The reason I say that is if you're building XYZ for this customer on version 30, and if you find that in the release notes or if you can find some uh, information from Odoo internally that, hey, this feature is going to be on the version 14. So rather than making some cute bucks to the customer, I would say that you should actually communicate openly with the end customer that the next version of Odoo is taking care of this, so you do not need to customize it. Now you've come to the last one where you looked at community uh, modules available, you looked at workarounds, you looked at whether there are any modules that you can buy from the Odoo store, and you also looked at the release notes for the next version, and you finalize that, okay, I need to build a custom module for this end customer. If that's the case, first and foremost, do not actually edit any of the Odoo core code base. Every time we actually help a customer by rescuing their Odoo, the biggest problem that we see is whenever they need a, a help with their sales order or purchase order or any of those different core modules where they need additional features or new fields or anything, some of these developers, they will go and edit and inject code into the core database. The problem is when you do that, when you're going for an upgrade, like as an uh, enterprise customer, Odoo will actually upgrade your database free of cost from one version to another. The problem is if you have those injected code there, this is going to fail. So please do not do that. Anything that you build, it has to be an external plug and play code, which, which actually goes into the external fold. I really hope that this top five mistakes, usually committed by the developers, whether you're working with a partner, whether you're working with a bunch of developers, or even you're working with an internal team that you're on developers, tell them that they cannot actually commit these five mistakes because this will not be a maintainable code over the long time and your ERP implementation is going to be a disaster.